the one that feel or the or the heart was disturbed, the pilot is not only you, right? Because there are several of your friends and so like that. But nobody complain. Yes. But nobody complain. Only you. So what do you see the difference? Why they don't complain? Um, well, there are more cases. Eh? There were more cases of people who started court cases and won their court cases, uh, but they you don't hear of them because there are gag orders with it. So you don't you don't see these uh, these uh, um, oh. victories victories. You don't see these cases, but there are more cases where people, well, not so many pilots, uh, I think. Um, no, it's. Uh, I think it's very difficult also for pilots because they love their job. Uh, you know, the most pilots do what they love most. So it's very difficult for them. They live, they work in a cult structure. That's always very significant because people don't realize that, that you're actually working in a cult structure. Uh, which makes it very difficult to talk uh, uh, to authority, to uh, to you know, to address authority on things which are not in line with moral standards uh, within that organization, uh, because they know if I I'm going to do this, and you're also put an example. If you, you see other people doing that, you see them going just their lives are sort of ruined in a certain way. It, uh, they don't want to go there. Same with 9-11. I mean, that was for me also a big uh, changing point that I thought these pilots are going to speak out now. I mean, flight operational and flight technical. I flew in the sector there. I was an examinator. I wrote some hijacking scenarios to train in the simulator. So I was very much aware uh, of what was happening in the Northeast sector. And then when 9-11 happened and then afterwards, uh, we did all these maneuvers in the flight simulator with instructors. And I thought now pilots are really going to speak out, but they don't. They don't want to, uh, you know, this is what they love most. And they don't want to have their bubble uh, being bursted, like in all sections of society. Same with doctors uh, we've seen the past uh, four years, you know, with uh, in other sections of society where people, uh, yeah, uh, if you're you're for uh, if if you, if you have the possibility to lose your uh, your convenience zone, people uh, are just doing these concessions, uh, moral concessions, and uh, apply moral rel relativity and uh, say uh, it's okay and uh, it's not so bad, or to the degree that it's even uh, fatal. And uh, that's why it's so serious, of course, uh, because this is in in flying. Uh, the most, uh, the sin, the most, uh, uh, the, the, the hardest sin, what is it? The, uh, is uh, ignoring the negative. So if you have toxic air on board, which is influencing uh, the health of people and pilots where uh, complex cognitive processes uh, have to be, have to secure a safe flight, and you ignore the fact that there is a component of toxic air which affect this uh, ability, uh, that can be fatal and ignoring the negative or if you have a technical problem you're going to write it down you're going to monitor it and you're going to make sure that you uh, take care of it same as in life where we just ignore the negative that uh, often has fatal consequences uh, but yeah people in group think and in cult structures uh, have these uh, blind uh, areas and there's just irrational areas uh, delusional areas that they think it's going to be okay or it's not so bad uh, until the point that you are uh, on the uh, on the on the on the on the what do you call it your uh, it's your turn 